Right, so control um, structure selection. So it says that um, in this one, in this topic, we will learn how to use the selection control structure and also understand the various um, selection uh, that we can use inside our code. Right, the one that we have learned so far um, is on the sequential. Right, so the statements that we have um, are executed in the sequential order. So we would do whatever that comes first um, in the first line, next line, and so on. All right, so in selection, what we want to do is we want it um, to choose um, what should be executed next. All right, so we have some kind of like condition, and if that condition is true, it will do it. If it is false, um, it will do something else. So after selection in the next topic, we will learn about repetition. So repetition, we can make sure that our, our program will keep on repeating, doing something like similar until we press something like to exit it. Right? In selection, um, basically it will decide whether it will do it will do A or it will do B and then end the program anyway. Right? So that's why we will learn about repetition later on to make sure that say that you are making a game. Um, your game will ask the player, do they want to play again before it exits it? Right, so over here is showing um, the flow of control for sequential structure. Right, so it goes, um, it reads through line by line of the code. Right, so example over here we have, okay, so we have this code. Um, the name of the class is example. Right, so remember that for your um, class name, normally you would start with capital letter. Right, so if, but even if you start with small letter, that's fine. But um, by convention, you should start with capital letter. Right, and then we have our main method. So public static void main string args. Um, we have a variable type int and we call it as number. Right, so remember that for your variables, um, normally you would use small letter. Okay, and then we want to take the input from the user. So last time we learned that if you want to take the input, we would use the scanner. Right, so we use the scanner and we call it as input. So this part, it can be anything. It can be like scanner, A, or anything that you want to use. And then you have to use new scanner um, and then system.in. Right, so to take in the input. And to use the scanner, you need to write this import statement. Otherwise, when you compile it, it will give you an error. So you would need to import java.util.scanner. Or as we saw last time, um, if you want to import everything within the um, util um, library, you can as well. Um, you can write import java.util.asterisk or the star. Right, so it will import all the classes within the java.util. But in our case, because we know that we want to use only scanner, so that's why we specify straight away, just import the scanner class. Right, and then on the next line, we have um, system.print enter a number. Um, and then it takes in the input from the user. Right, and make sure that you still remember this one. Right, we use next int because we are expecting an int. If you are expecting a double, then you would use next double. If it's a string, next or next line. Right? So the type of this should be the same as what variable that you have declared before. Right, so it asks the user enter a number, take in the input, and then it will display um, you have entered and then the number that has been input. Right. So over here, you can see that it reads um, line by line um, in the in the order that we write that we write the code. All right. So that is the sequential structure. All right, so in the selection structure, um, based on whatever the condition of it, um, if it is true, the condition is true, then we will do something. Otherwise, we don't want it to do anything. All right? Um, so in this one, in your flow chart, um, you would use the diamond shape to represent the condition part. 
All right, so example over here, so not really the code yet, but the example of what it meant by selection is say that um, in a lift, right, the maximum load is 250 kg. Um, so you would have the condition of it. If it exceeds 250, then it will give warning with a beep sound. If it does not exceed 250, then basically it doesn't do anything, just close the door and the lift would go up or down. All right? So this uh, example of um, the condition that that has in the selection part. All right, so we haven't really looked into how to write it, but over here we have um, an example code of, of the similar code from before, but over here, um, based on the number that the user input, we want to know whether it is an even or an odd number. All right, um, the first few codes are the same as before. All right, so those are the same codes. Um, over here, we want to check whether it is um, odd or even. So we would use our if statement. So we just say that if the num okay. So over here we are using the modulus, right? So any number if we modulus it with two, um, any even number two, four, six, um, eight, ten, right? Any of those number if we do it with modulus two, um, it will give us zero as the remainder, right? So that is an indicator that that number is an even number. So the condition over here we say that. If number modulus with two, the result of it, if it give a zero, then we will say that that number is an even number. All right. So this is one of the things that we can use our if and also the um, operational um, operator or the relational operator to get some result that we want. So we will look um, into this part again in the next few slides. But in this um, slide over here is basically showing about having the condition as true, it will print something. If the condition is false, it doesn't do anything at all. It will skip this um, if part. All right, so for the selection, there are three types of it. We have the if statement as what we saw over here. Um, there's also if else statement. So in if else statement, um, when the condition is true, it will do something. When the condition is false, it will do something else. Right? Within the if statement, um, it will only do something when the condition is true. When it's false, it doesn't do anything. Right? And then um, after if, if else, of course, we have the multiple and nested if else, meaning that we have if else or if within the if else. Um, we also have the switch statement. So switch statement, um, similar to if and if else, but slightly different way of writing it, right? So it really depends whether you prefer to use if else or you prefer to use switch. Um, as for me personally, I prefer to use if else rather than switch. But using switch, it kind of like make your code more compact and easier to read. But we will look at those different things and we are going to learn um, um, each of them. Right, so for if statement, um, the syntax of it, the way of writing it, um, we would write if in front, and then we would have um, the bracket, right? And then inside of it, we would write our condition. Well, not condition as condition, well, some kind of like condition. Example, as before, we have um, number modulus two equal to zero, right? So those, that is an example of um, a condition that we can write. So in the condition, it can be some kind of like calculation as well. Um, and then you would close the bracket. Um, and then on the next line, you would write the statement or what you want to be displayed or what you want to calculate whenever the condition is true. All right? If the condition is false, it will not do the statement that comes after it. All right, so before we go back into um, the if statement, so we are going to look into the Boolean expression first. All right, so Boolean expression, it says over here, a condition often uses one of Java's equality operators or relational operators, um, which all will return the Boolean results. All right, so when we want to compare two values, 
um, we want to compare is the first value equal to the second one, we would use this um, double equal sign, right? Which means equal to. Um, let's see, do we have the code? No, we don't have the code, right? So this is to compare two values. Um, but when we compare it, as it says over here, it will all return a Boolean result. Right, so it will give you either true or false. Um, that is equal to, we also have not equal to comparing two values. Um, are they the same or not? Also, it will give the whether the answer as true or false. Um, and then we have less than, greater than, um, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to. Right, um, similar things as what we have used in math. But over here, keep note that um, for less than or equal, you would write the less than or larger than and then the equal separately. All right, so you have to be careful with this one when you are um, when you are writing the code by hand, right? Because sometimes um, in the exams, I would get um, students writing something like this, right? If you write something like this one, um, I will deduct half of the mark, right? Because in programming, when you write the code, it cannot, well, there's no symbol like this one. You have to write it um, less than or equal, right? Or larger than or equal, right? So don't write as what you would write um, in maths. Okay, so just to show that the all written Boolean results, let's open our J graphs over here. Um, let's remove all of this. Right, so I have public class, my class one. So this is from the last time uh, or the last example. And then we have our main method. Um, right, so to check um, whether the value is equal to the other one, uh, we can have like variable int number one equal to five. Int number two equal to five. Um, we can have, what should I do is, well, we can have, because I don't want to use if yet, you can have system dot out dot print line or print. We can have, this one should work, number one equal to number two. Wait, um, I can see my, oops, this one over here. Okay, compile it, no problem. Okay, let's run it, run it, run it. All right, so you can see that it gives me the value true. So I'm comparing the value five with the value five. All right, so you can use it uh, within your system or the print line or um, in any other case that you want to use it. This one just to, sim um, to simplify it and just um, compare the variable of it. You can see that it compares the value that that variable contains. Or if you don't want to use variable, you can always like straight away use the number. See that we remove this part. So you want to see it's five equal to five. Let's go this one first. All right, so it shows it as true. Or if you want to use not equal, it's five not equal to five. It show us false because five is equal to five. All right. Um, what else that we have? Um, if five larger than five, if we run it. It will give us false because five is not larger, but it is equal. If we have larger or equal, if we run it it will show us the value as true, All right? 
So this is uh, quite useful when you want to compare um, two values or many other values. All right, so later on, we are going to learn about um, the logical Boolean operation if we want to have like several conditions um, and making sure that if one is true, another one is false, what, what we want to do with it. Okay. Um, all right. Oh, and also another thing is when you have the Boolean expression or the relational operators, um, it doesn't matter whether you have space or not um, between your numbers or your variable. All right. So in Java, whatever space that you have, it will just ignore it. Um, I normally would put space. Oh, my screen is frozen. Ah, okay. I think that I click on pause just now. Sorry about that. Wait, I'll repeat this one again. I think that you did not see the code running, was it? Okay, so I'll go back again. Um, so you did not see the when I have the variable as well. Okay, All right. Um, so that's the thing about using just like one screen. <laughs> Normally, um, if I have like several screens, I can have like several things running at once. Anyway, okay. So this is comparing two values. Um, say that you have the value five. You want to compare it with another value five. All right, and we can use um the different um relational operators. Right. Example over here, let's have five equal to five. All right. Of course, we know that five is equal to five. But we just want to see what will be the output of it because when we look at our slide it says it will all return boolean results all right so running this one it will show the value as true all right it will not give you like value five or anything like that because it will give um, boolean as the result all right so you can also try with not equal if not equal i'm running this again Right. When we say 5 not equal to 5, it will give the value false because this is the same value. Right. But if you say something like 5 not equal to 15, it will give you the value of true right? because 5 is not uh, 15. So the same thing you would use for um, less than, greater than, and it will give you the result based on the two numbers or two values that you will compare. Five larger, no, less than 15, which will give you true. All right? So remember that the one that I mentioned before, if you have less than um, or equal or greater than or equal, you need to write this um, two different character or symbol. Okay? Yeah, and also the one that I mentioned before, um, any space that you have in between them, it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't mean anything at all. But I would normally would have the space um, so that it's easier to read it through. All right, and also another thing, this is comparing the number straight away. You can also use variable. For example, int num number one equal to five, int number two equal to 15, All right? And then, oops, and then over here, instead of writing five, you can have comparing the value of the variable, number two. It will still give you the same result, right? Just different way of writing it, whether you want to use numbers or you want to use the variable. Okay, um, what else did I say just now that I forgot to repeat again? I think this is pretty much it. Equal, equal condition. Okay. All right, so you can um, play around with these different relational operators um, to understand and, and to use it. All right, but we are going to use this one a lot. Well, normally, the equal to, not equal to within our um, if condition. If condition, this one. All right, so over here is showing um, examples of the Boolean expressions. All right, so similar to what I showed you before, but this one, um, it uses different variables. For example, if you have a variable called test score, 
right, you want to check the test score, um, you can have like test score less than 80 and then do something when when the test score is less than 80 or something else if the test score is larger than 80. Right, you can use the equal, not equal. Um, and as I mentioned just now, you can also do some calculation. And then whatever that value from that calculation is, um, you would use that value to compare with another value. Right. Or in this part, you have W times H times H. All right, so it depends on how you want to write it. Some people would prefer to do the calculation before you would do the comparison. All right, something like if we have W times H times H, that one, you might want to have something like W equal to W times H times H. Then only you would do your comparison inside your if. Right. But if you do it this way, you have like two lines of code. If you do it straight away within your if condition, then you only you can save like one line of your code. But both ways would give you um, the same answer or the same result. Right. Um, in this part over here, I have int number equal to five and then system the out print line number not equal to five, which will give the output as false. Right. So always remember that. Um, any of the relational operators, um, it will give you boolean result, either true or false. Right, so going to the if um, statement, right, so this is the flowchart of it. Right, so we have the condition, if it's true, it will do something, if it's false, um, it will not do whatever the statement whenever it's true. All right, so this is how you would draw it. Um, and also in the flowchart, you need to label the true and false part as well, because it can be the other way around. Well, not with if, but anyway, in the if else, it can be the other way around. All right, so always remember to label your true and false. And also for your true and false, um, make sure that you use small letter, right? because even in Boolean, um, our true and false um, represented by the small letter, true and also false. Okay, how about now? No sound? Right, so which part did not have sound just now? I will repeat again what I said earlier. Um, this one is fine, was it? Okay, right. Only a week break and then things falling apart. <laughs> All right, so uh, this part, did you hear about the condition for the true and false? Right, anyway, so for the flow chart of it, um, you would write the condition within the diamond shape. Right? And then if it is true, um, it will do something. If it's false, it will not do this. It will not um, output anything or do whatever statement or calculation that you have. Right, so the the arrow would be or the flow of it would be the same as what we have learned um, when we learned about our flow chart before as well right okay see that because it's easier when we have this example for the test score right um see that the test score if it's less than 40 it will print out you fail right um if the test score is larger than 40 then it doesn't display anything 
So the way that you would write your condition, you can write as test score less than 40. Um, and in the example over here, it puts the question mark. All right. So you can write it that way. Um, or even without the question mark, that is fine as well. So it, because like most ways would work, um, the way that I normally would write um, whenever I write the flowchart, I normally would write something like, let me just write it over here. I would write test score. Oh wait, I forgot to click enter. Let me type again. If test score less than 40. Okay. And then the diamond shape. All right, so I normally prefer to write if straight away inside. Because when we learn about repetition, um, the looping, um, it will still use the diamond shape as well. All right, so you can be specific within your flowchart and write that you are using if inside of it. Or if you don't want to write if, that's fine as well. You can do it as what shown over here. All right, so if it is true, um, it will display um, you feel. All right, so this one, you can write system the print line, or as we have learned before, you can write it as. output or if you don't want to use output as the keyword of it you can write display display right they still mean different word that that you might want to use All right and also over here if true it will print this one out if it false then it will just exit the if So that's why the arrow is pointing after the statement, right? Not before, but after the statement. Right. Um, over here is showing the well part of the code that that might be um, the code that can be used for this um, food chat over here. Right, so it says over here we have double test score equal to 38.5 and then if test score less than 40 um, it will print out um, your fill and then we have another system the adopt print line next semester will start on well this is 2018 a long time ago All right so when you have your um if if statement All right if you write your if test score less than 40 only one statement that comes after it belongs within the if, meaning that if this one is true, this will be executed. If this is false, this one is false, it will not do this part, but this statement, this last one over here, will be printed out. Right? But even if when this condition is true, this statement over here will still be printed out because this is outside of the if statement. All right. Um, and it's better if I type in on J crabs. Right. So let me know if something is frozen or you cannot hear me. Right. Let's do. Or we can have the same um the same example as before. So we have double as score equal to thirty eight point five. Then we have our if test score less than forty system dot out dot print line let's see i don't actually like the the negative 
sentence that's saying you feel. So let's change it a bit. Let's do the opposite of the example. All right, see that we have this one. And let me clear this part. We're in the example, right? Something like this. All right, so we have test score equal to 80.5. Um, if test score is larger than 40, it will print out you pass and then see you next semester. All right, so this is when the value is 80.5. When it compare it at this condition, it will become true. All right, because it is true. Run it. All right. So it displays um, you pass and then see you next semester. All right. But in this case, as I mentioned, only this one belongs to the if statement. This see you next semester, this is outside of the if statement. So meaning that if the condition is false, um, it will still print out see you next semester. So let's try it out. You see that I put over here 30.5. Right, so 30.5 when it do the checking for the condition, it will become false. So it should not uh, display you passed. So you compile it, run it. Right, so you can see that it only displays you next semester. Right, so this one, um, for me, if I write the code, I normally would put like a, a, a space over there so that it is less confusing when you have like several statements. All right, so always remember that when you have your if or your if else, only one statement that after it would belong to the if statement. All right, anything that comes after it, even if you write it oops, even if you write it this way or you arrange it this way it does not make this statement within that if this is still outside of the if let me run it again all right so it still doesn't oops, doesn't display you pass because the condition is false all right so going a bit forward a bit say that you want to have like several statements within your if you want to uh, display you pass and then see you next semester only if the condition is true right so what you would do is you would use the curly bracket and if you have your opening curly bracket you always need to close it right when you have the curly bracket you are seeing that whatever within that curly bracket um, would belongs into the if when the condition is true. Okay, so over here we have the condition is false, right? When the condition is false, nothing will be displayed because we don't have any other statement whenever this condition is false. We say that the condition is true, change to 80 again. Let's run it. So it shows you pass, see you next semester. All right? So it displays both of the statements that are within the if when the condition is true. Is it okay? Or any question that you have um, at this part? Okay, 
Right, so I thought that my mic not be working again. <laughs> anyway, uh, right. Okay. Um, so I'll go back over here. Okay. All right, so another example over here is um, using the not equal operator um, within your within the condition. All right, so just similar as before over here, we have two variables, double y equal to 15.0 and then double x equal to 25.0. Um, and then the condition is if y not equal to x, it will display a result y not equal to x. Right. Um, so inside the condition, you can use the equal to, not equal, larger than, smaller than, larger or equal, smaller than, equal. Right. So you can use any of them depending on what you want to see um, as the output or what kind of like condition you want to check. Right, so another example over here is using the um, larger or equal operator. Right, so in this one, it says um, double total price equal to 120. And if total price larger or equal than 100, it will display, you will get 20% discount. And then thank you for coming to see my, right. So in this one, as I mentioned before, even though you write it um, at the same, at, um, it doesn't mean that this second to the if, right? So over here, the only statement that belongs to the if is only the one that comes after it. Right? So if this condition is false, this will not be um, displayed. Right, it will still do the last part because this is outside of the if statement. If you want to include both lines within the if statement, meaning that you will, will you will display both um, statements if the condition is true, then you would put them within the curly bracket. Right, then that would mean that both two statements are inside the if. Right, so this is using larger or equal. Um, in this example over here is using less than or equal operator. Right, same as before, doesn't matter if you write it at the same site, right? Only this one belongs to the if and it will be displayed um, if the condition is true, right? So this one is outside of the if. Okay, so let's look at this one. Right, um, okay, so the first one, int number equal to 10. If number equal to 10, system dot dot print line, the number is number. Right, so in the first one, what is the error um, at the first part? Which one is incorrect about it? Looking at this one. What is incorrect on how we write the if statement? Is it the first line, the second line, or the third line that is incorrect? And how you would change it to make it correct? Okay. So the second line is incorrect. So how you would change it to make it um, correct? Right, so as your friend said, at the um at the brackets over there. All right. Um okay, so let me write over here. Okay, so I would change it. I would write if number equal to 10. All right, so what if I write the semicolon at the end? Does it give me an error or is it still okay? Does it 
print out the number is the number or does it print something else? So if you try and run the code, if you write if number equal to 10 and then you have the semicolon, um, you, it does not give you an error. Right, let's write this one on jcraps. Okay, so let's remove, or well, let's remove it. Int number equal to 10 if number equal to 10. then number is class number Right, so this is the part that I was mentioning before. Right, so this one, if we compile it, there's no error. Right, but from the examples that we saw before, we did not have the semicolon. Right, so if we run this one, let's run it, it still print out the number is 10. Right, but when you have the semicolon, it's basically is doing you have if number equal to 10 and then you have an empty statement. Okay, what I meant by that is say that we change number over here as 100. Right, if it's compare 100 equal to 10, that is false, right? But you can see that from the output, it still display the number is 100. Because this is reading it as this is the statement that belongs to the if, which is nothing. And this is the statement outside of the if. That's why it still display the number is 100. All right? So be careful when you write it not to accidentally write the semicolon at the end of your if. See so that we remove this one. If we run it in the output, it doesn't show anything. Wait, let's clear and run it again. All right, there's no output at all because the condition is false. If you have your semicolon over there, if you run it, it will display the number is 100 towards the end because this is outside of the if statement. So be careful about um, the semicolon. You shouldn't have the semicolon. Right, is it clear about um, about writing the if? So the second one is the correct way of writing it. You have int number equal to 10, and then your if uh, and the condition that you have, you would write it within the brackets, right? And only one statement that comes after it would belong to the if. Is it okay about if and also not accidentally writing the semicolon at the end of your um, of your condition for the if statement? All right, so just try things out. See what happens if you put the semicolon or if you don't have it, if you have several statements um, to understand more on how this works. Okay. Right, so moving on from here. Right, so block statement. So I've covered about this one. Um, it says that when we have several statements, you can group it together into a block statement where in the block statement, you would use the um, curly bracket or the braces. Right, so you can put it on the next line or you can put it at the end of it. Right, doesn't matter um, where you want to put it. So whenever you have um, the block statements or the curly bracket or the braces, um, all the statements inside of it will belong within the if statement when the condition is true. 
right? Because sometimes in your program, when the condition is true, there are several things that you you might want to use this um, braces or curly bracket to contain all the statements. All right, so the, the statements that it mentioned, so it's not just um, the system that are the print line or print, it can be anything, maybe some kind of like calculation, or you might have another if inside your if. All right, so it really depends on what you want your program to do. Right, um, this one, we're basically just repeating what we saw last time on the previous slides. Um, it says over here, if test score less than 40, um, you fail, try harder next um, time. And if we compare it with the other one, if test score less than 40 um, without the curly bracket or the braces, um, you fail, try harder next time, right? So in these two parts, you can try and run it um, you will get that the output, if the test score, say that the test score is 20. Well, if it's 20, it will display both of them. Let's do something else. Say that the test score is... Test score is 60. Right? If the test score is 60, um, if you run it with the first code, it will not display um, any of those, right? Because the condition is false. But if you run it with the second code over here, um, the condition is false. So it only does not display this part, but it will display this last part. Because when you have several statements, you don't have the braces or the curly bracket, only one statement that comes after your if statement belongs to the if. This is outside of the if. So it will still display try harder next time. All right, so when you write your code, uh, be mindful about whether you want to use the braces or not. But even if you have like one statement, just one line, you can use the braces. All right, just in case you want to be like really careful with it. For example, like over here, if the condition is true, you want to print out the number is and the value of it. Right, so even with one statement, you can still use um, the braces. Right, it's only that you are wasting one line over here. Okay. Um... What time is it? Okay. Right, um, logical Boolean operation. So the one that we saw before um, was comparing like two values, right? So now say that you have like, you want to do something them are true or you want to do something even when it's false. Right, so we can use this N operator Right. So we we'll use double of the end symbol. So we call it as the end. Um, or we can use this or operator. Um, this one over here. Well, I'm not sure what it's being called, but on your keyboard, um, you would find it next to the curly, bra uh, curly bracket or the braces. Right. So the symbol of just like that part. So you would use double of it to mean or. And another one is we have not or the exclamation mark. So we call it as not. Um, with not, it will just give you the opposite of whatever Boolean value that you have. Say that you write something like, okay, not true. So this is basically, it means false, right? So it's when you have the not, it is opposite of whatever that Boolean value is. Right, so looking at the end and also or, um, right, so I want to look at this one first. With the end, if you are comparing two things, 
like this one you are comparing carry marks um less than 10 and also final mark less than 20 so it can be anything it can be like carry mark less than 10 carry mark larger than 100 something like that it can be any kind of like range that you want to use if you use the end the end operator um if one of it is true let's see end the end then the final result of it it will always be false all right so that is if you are using end when the first one is false the second one is also false then um, the condition is false if the first one is true the second one is false the condition of the if is false Right. It will only become true if the first condition, the second condition, both of them are true. Then only um, it will get as true. Right. So this is the important part because within your if, when the condition is true, it will execute whatever statement that you have written over there. When the condition becomes false, it will not do the statements and skip and go to whatever else you have in your code. Right, so that is if you are using and if you are using or um right do we have the okay if you are using or right, basically instead of using that and you would use or over there um with or if one of it is true then the condition or the the if it will become true Right, so false and false, it will give you false. Um, if you have false or true, it will give you true. Um, true or false, when one of it, because it's or, um, it will give you true. If it's true or true, of course, um, it will give you true. Right? So just remember that with end, both of them needs to be true. Then only you will get it as true. For or, um, one of it is true, then it will give it as true. Right, and also the, the not from before. Um, whenever you have not, so over here is not P. Just looking at this P part over here. Oops. It's just the opposite of what the initial value is. When you have not P, if the initial value is false, when you not it, it becomes true. Right? If it's true, when you not it, it becomes false. Just the opposite of it. Um, let's see, do we have examples of it? Well, we do have examples of it, but um, let's have other examples that is making more sense. Okay, say that we have um, let's remove this one first and also this one. Say that we have score. equal to okay let's leave it at there see that we want we want the condition that the score it should be between 0 and 100 right we don't want anybody to have score like negative 10 or 150 All right so we can have if score we want it to be in the range of it so we can have if score um larger or equal to zero this is our first condition and we want it also to be uh, within below 100 or at least 100 as the maximum we can have end or we can have or that end would fit better here score less equal to 100 All right so if we have the value 10 10 is larger than 0, so this is true. 
The second one, uh, 10 is also less or equal to 100. So the condition is true. So if we run this one, okay, no problem in compiling it. It shows that the number is 10. Oh, let's change the score. All right, because it's within the range of it. See that over here, um, we have int score equal to 1000. Right, it doesn't show anything as the output because 1000, it checks the first one. Um, 1000 is larger than zero, that is true. But when it checks the second condition, um, 1000 is less equal to 100, this is false. So when it has true and false, it will give us false. So that's why it does not um, display the score is um, 1000. All right, and also that over here, you can see that I did not put the first condition, the second condition within the bracket, All right? Um, if you want to put bracket, that's fine as well. If you don't want to put bracket, that can also be okay. Oops, this one. Both will give you um, the same output, right? But you might want to use the bracket so that it's much clearer that this is your first condition, this is your second condition. All right, and this is the use of the end operator. And similar as before, even without any space in between, um, that's fine. Right. It's only that it can be difficult to read through the code when you don't have the space. All right. Other examples um, that are given over here um, say that you have um, some index number less than 100 and another condition about distance. Um, if both of them are true, right, both of them need to be true um, to execute this statement because you are using AND. If you are using OR, um, at least one of it is true, you will execute the statements inside of it. All right. So this one is using the NOT. So whatever the result from here, it will give the opposite of it. Right, say that the test score is okay, test score less than 40. See that you have 20 over here. 20 less than 40 is true. But even when that is true, you, you don't want to show you pass the exam, right? Because 20 is below the passing mark. So you would use the not over here. So you are changing from true it becomes false at this point. So when it becomes false, it will not execute this line. So the use of the not, it can be a bit confusing because you are taking it the other way around. All right, so try and make the code that you write as simple as possible um, so that it will not confuse you and confuse anyone else when they are reading through your code. But this is just to show that this kind of thing, this way of writing, some people would do it that way. All right, so before going that one, I think I skip this part. All right, so this example is um, showing the use of the not operator. All right, so in the previous example, we have y not equal to x. This one, all right? So this can also be rewritten as y equal to x and then you not it. So similar as the example that we saw um, just now on using the not to give uh, about the test call. All right, so both ways give you the same result. They are doing the same thing, only slightly different way of writing.
All right, so any question about the and or and also not before we continue a bit more? Is it okay or is it already too much to process? Okay, so let's continue a bit more of it. Right. Okay, about the uh, precedence of operators. Right, so which one to be done first, um, next, and so on. Right, um, the first one it says over here the um, first precedence that has the highest priority, the unary operators. So this one. Um, the plus minus, this refers to the positive number and also negative number, not plus minus. Right? And also the not um, that would have the um, highest priority. And then the second one, we have multiplication, division, modulus. Um, and then the third one would be plus minus, right? addition, subtraction. Then only we would do the less than, less equal, larger, equal or larger. Um, and the fifth one would be the equal sign, the equal, not equal. Um, the sixth would be the end. Um, then only you would do the or and the equal, the assignment operator that has the lowest uh, precedence. All right, so example over here, we have Boolean X equal to in bracket minus 5 plus 10 larger equal 0 and 7 modulus 2 equal to 1. Right. See that we have this one and we see that the type of it is Boolean. So it will either be true or false. So in this one, we want to compare um, this value here. And then we would end, end with it um, another value here. Right. So it can be true or true, true, true and true, true and false, um, depending on what is the result for the first one and also the result of the second one. All right, so whenever we have the brackets, um, of course, we would do whatever the bracket first. Okay, so in this one, let's write it down. All right, so we have Boolean X equal to minus 5 plus 10. So that is within the bracket. So we would do that part first. Uh, minus 5, wait, I put it a bit at the top. So minus 5 plus 10, that is giving us 5. Then we would write the rest of it larger equal to zero and um, seven modulus two equal to one. All right, so that is the second um, precedence order modulus part. All right, so seven modulus two, seven modulus two will give us one as the remainder. All right, and one equal. Let's see. Let's write it. One by one, one equal to one, like this. All right, and then um, the next precedence order would be let's see, we have then the second, which is the modulus, um, is the larger or equal um, sign. All right, so we would do five larger equal to zero, that one first. Um, five larger equal to zero, that is true. We would not do the n because n has lower priority. So we would do the next part, um, 1 equal to 1, which is also true. All right? Okay, after we have done the equal part, um, then only we would do the end uh, part. So true and true will give us true. All right, so x is equal to true. So in this example over here, just to show that uh, when you have like several numbers uh, and you have the different operations or operators, um, how you how you would do it and which one to do it first, right? So this is based on um, the precedence order of it. All right. So always remember that the end part of it um, that is nearly towards the end. Right. Um, so even though you can run this in your code, 
um, even though you can run it um, in the code, make sure that you know how to do it manually as well. Because in your in your exams, um, you are expected to be able um, to look through it and to go through it manually as what I showed you just now. All right, so we only have look at if. Um, so whenever the condition is true, it will do something. Otherwise, it doesn't do anything. Right. So as for now, we want to be able to still do something when the condition is false. So this is where we would use an else clause. Right. So uh, when we want to have else, we need to pair it with if. So we need to have if else. Right. We cannot only have else. For if, we can have only if without the else part. Right. As what we have look um, over here. Oops. Where was it? This one, All right? But to use else, you need to have if before it, All right? So it says over here, um, when we have if else, so the way that we would write it, um, similar as before, the only difference is um, you would write the condition um, within your if. You can have any statement inside your if. And then when you write your else, you don't have to write any condition, right? Because whenever you have the condition, you only have two kind of result, either true or false. This if over here will only be executed statements here when it is true. When the condition is false, it will go straight away into the else part. Right? So this is selection. It will select which one to do. Um, if true, the first one. If false, it will do the second one. Right, and it says over here, one or the other will be executed, but not both. Right, only one of it. If you want, for example, like the statement one to be executed, whether the condition is true or false, then you should not put it within your if and also else. Maybe you would write it somewhere else outside of the if else. Right, whenever you put within your if or within your else, it will only be executed when the condition is um according to what it should be if if it's true um within the else when it is false right so um the flowchart of it right similar as before you would still write the condition within the diamond ship um and but as for now because you would do something when it is false then you need to write um sub statement inside of it right so it can be statement it can be process it can be any input output so it depends on what you want your program to do right and the arrows also pointing downwards right um okay so you have your true part and also the false part right so you need to label true and also false because it can always be the other way around all right so always remember to label them and when you label the true and false, uh, make sure that you write your true and also your false, your T and F in small letters. Because with Boolean, the true and false would be in small letter. Right. Um, okay. So after you have your true and false and then the statement inside of it, so you can combine it and point to whatever the program needs to do next. Right, because it will still choose whether to use, to do this one or this one depending on the condition. So it makes more sense if we look at the next slide where we have the example. Right, so this is the same example as before. Um, we check the test score. Um, is it less than forty? If less than forty, um, it will print out you failed. If it's larger or equal to forty, it will print out you pass. Right? So you can see that we have the true of it and also the false part. So it will choose only one of it um, to be displayed. So that's why towards the end, you would combine the true or false and then pointing it downwards to do something else. So you can arrange it something like this or you can arrange it differently. For example, you have your test score over here. And then you want your true and false. If it's true, it will output something. 
if it's false it input something else All right so this is basically how you want to arrange it you can draw it something like this so see that this is true you need to write the true t-r-u-e and also false f-a-l-s-e right and then towards the end whatever that is it will do something else All right so this is just rearrange it differently um the way that you arrange is up to you um but make sure that you try to arrange it so that it's easy when you look at it, you can make sense of what happened next um, in your code. All right, I, don't, I normally prefer to draw it this way so that I can see on my left and right for the true and also false. But if you draw it like this, it's still correct. Oh yeah, and also another thing over here, it writes system dot print line straight away. All right, so as we, as we have learned before, um, you can use those or you can use other keyword for example you can write output or you can write display All right just different words to still refer to the same thing okay um All right so this is the code that um, represent this flowchart. All right, so the same thing. So you have your if, and then the condition of it, test score less than 40, and then you have your system that are print line, you fill else when the when this condition is false, it will print out you passed. All right, um, it can be the other way around. Say that you want to have um, if test score larger than 40, um, you would print you pass, else you fail. Right? So it depends on how you want to write your code and how you want to arrange it. It can be um, the other way around. I right? will always remember that um, whatever inside your if, the statement inside your if, that will only be executed when this condition um, is true. When the condition is false, it will go straight away into the else part. Right. Okay. Um. Okay. So the next one, um, just more examples of it, because the uh, the example that we saw before is just a simple one. So this one in this example, um, basically what it wants to do is it takes the user input for the total price, and then it checks. If the total price is larger than 100, um, it will calculate the discount. The, the discount that they will get is 20%. If the total price is less than 100, then the, the discount that they get is 5%. Right. So for the um, pseudocode, you can write your start and end, and then uh, you will have your input um, total price. Um, and then the the condition of it, if total price larger than 100, you will do the calculation, the process. Right? Calculate discount equal to 20 divided by 100 times total price. And then you have your else. When the condition is false, um, it will calculate it differently. Right? Only this part are within your um, if else. This print over here. This is outside of your if else. So it doesn't matter whether your condition is true or false. Towards the end, it will only it will always um, display discount given is some RM ringgit. Okay. Right, and also in the pseudocode, right, when you have your if else um, similar to what to how you would write your code later on, um, normally you would have some space in front of it. So that you know this process is within the if and this process is within the else. Right? Um, it's just to make it easier for you when you are reading through the pseudocode. Right, so the uh, pseudocode and the flowchart 
um, the same thing. So for the flow chart, we have our start um, input total price and then the um, the condition of it total price larger than 100. Right, so this one, this should be small letter T and small letter F over here. Right, so when it is true, it will calculate discount 20%. Um, if it falls, um, the discount is 5%. All right, so remember that this one, it will use the rectangle shape because this is a process. For input output, you would use the parallelogram. All right, any process in rectangle. All right, so in this one here, if it falls 5%, and then it will print out the discount. If it's true, 20%. And it will still print out discount given is um, what is the value of it. All right. So you can point your arrows similar to the example over here. Or if you want to draw it differently. Um, so I'll just draw it from the diamond shape. All right. So it should have the complete begin, input, this kind of things. All right. So you can have your, okay, say that we have similar to this one. When this is true and also when it is false. True, false. True, false. Because what happens over here is it points out straight away. Right? Um, you can also redraw it. As something like this, this is end. All right, where you say that whether it's true or false towards the end, it will um, go to the last part, which is print discount given RM something. All right, you can do it this way, uh, combining the true and false, or you can point it straight away to the final part that will be executed regardless true or false um i would recommend doing it this way actually rather than what we have in our slide All right so that you know you have exit the um if else and this is outside of the if else Okay, um, all right. Okay, so the code of it um, that represent that pseudocode and also flowchart is this one, right? Um, so we have input total price. So it takes the input from the user. So we can have our scanner. So remember that when we went to use our scanner, we need to import the java.util.scanner or if we want to import the whole um, classes inside java.util, we can always write it as import java, java.util.asterisk for the star. All right, so it will import everything including the scanner class. Okay, and then what we have, uh, we have the scanner, we call our scanner as scan, right? It can be anything. Um, and then ask the user to enter total price, we take the input total price. So basically this input total price, it actually refers to this part. Right, so that is the input. Um, and then the checking total price larger than 100. So that is our if over here. Um, when it is true, it will calculate 20% um, discount. Um, else, it will go to 5%. All right. Always remember that um, in your flow chart, whatever that you have, um, they need to have some arrows pointing where it should do next. So even if it's true or even if it's false, it needs to have an arrow to whatever it needs to be done next. So maybe if it falls, it doesn't do anything. So even when if it doesn't do anything, um, you still need to point it somewhere. So maybe it goes straight away to end the program. All right. So 
don't make your code just like hanging over there not knowing what it should do next even if it doesn't do anything it will always go to the end of the program right so the flowchart over here kind of like the simplified version of it we did went through um, the flowchart where we want it to represent how we would write our code right so if we want it to really represent the code that we are writing over here so normally we would have we have our start and then we would have wait, where should i draw this one we have our start and then we would have enter total price um wait i think that i'll just write it annotate write it okay so we would have our start and then output and the total price and then the next step we would take our input um input total price and then the next step then only we would have the condition of it total price larger than 100 and the rest would just follow All right um let me just have the correct sheep and then total price in that sheep then we have our start And we should have the arrow as well. Well, I cannot draw the arrow. Otherwise, it will just move things um, out. Right, but you have the, but you, you get the idea of it, right? So when we have it this way over here, then we kind of like represent how we want to write our code. If you just like write it this way, um, you know that you will get the input somehow but then you still have to think about do do you want to write some some sentence to ask the user to enter the input or it doesn't show anything but just waiting for the user to type something All right i would recommend doing it step by step the second way over here so that it is much clearer in your pseudocode and also in your flowchart so that when you write your code you can just like follow the flow that you have listed out in your flowchart or in your pseudocode. Right, um, what else over here? Oh yeah, and also in this one, it uses printf. Right, so remember about printf, we have um, the percentage f, percentage d to represent different data type of it, right? And when you use printf, you would use comma. Um, instead of using the plus to concatenate the first um, sentence or the first part with the second part. Right, and over here we have percentage.2f because we want to show up until two decimal point. All right, so if you run the code, so uh, there shouldn't be any error in the code. If you run it and if you enter 90, then the output that you will get is 4 and get 50 cents. Right, um, block statement. So similar to um, what we is seen within our if um, in the if else if we have more than one statement then we need to use the curly bracket or the braces All right for example over here if test score less than 40 um, it will print out you fail try harder next time if the test score is larger than 40 it will go to the else and within the else it want to print out you pass give it up All right um, with the curly brackets or the braces um, it doesn't mean that if you use in your if, you need to use in the else, right? So say that in your if, you have two statements. So of course, you need to use the curly brackets. But in your else, if you only have one statement, um, you can choose not to have the curly bracket, right? It will still, um, it works the same. OK, 
Okay. Um, all right, so this is the flow chart when you have the um, block statement. All right, you have um, two output when it's true and also two output when it's false. All right, so you can combine them and root it as what it's shown over here. Or if you want to put it separately, that's fine as well. For example, you have your test score over here. Um, if it's true, you want to print out your fill, try harder next time. If it's false, um, you pass, keep it up. So this is false. And this is when it's true. All right, so you can separate them into into um, different different um, output or you can combine them. So it's up to you um, which way that you prefer. All right. For me, I normally would separate them. But both ways, they still mean the same thing. All right, so this is the um, pseudocode of it where you have your start, input, test score, um, the way that this is just to show the way that you can write it or you should write it. So when you have two statements or more than two statements within your if, then you would have like some spaces in front of it. And then you will get to your else and then some spaces in front of it as well. So that you know these two statements belongs inside the else. These two statements over here belongs inside the if. Okay, so more examples. Um, this one is um, combination of block statement and logical operators. All right, so um, as we saw it, when we learned about if, we can use the and or um, operators to combine two or more conditions. All right, but when we combine it, we have to look at the and or the or that we are using. So that if one condition is true and if one condition is true inside end, if you use end, um, when one of, of it is true, the final output of it would, would be false. So it will not execute whatever inside your if. But if you are using or, if one of it is true, one of the condition of it is true, then it will execute the statements inside your if. All right. So still, uh, be careful about um, the operators that you use so that it, it will give you the output that you expect. Now, example over here, it says, determine grade if test score is higher or equal to 85 and at the achieved grade, if it's higher or equal to 85, the grade is A, All right? So we have the condition. So the first one, test score larger equal to 85 and test score should be less than 100, All right? So over here, we are giving the limit of it 85 to 100. Um, if we don't have test score less equal than 100, then if the user enter 150, um, it will still execute this part because 150 is larger um, than 85. All right? So this is just to limit the range of it to only between 85 to 100. All right. Um, Okay, so in this case as well, if say that you enter 150, if you enter 150 in this case, um, it checks the condition. So the condition over here is false. So it will go straight away to the else. So basically, even when your score is 150, it will display, sorry, you did not get A, try again next time. Right? Even though 150 is actually an invalid score. Right, so any question for if else before we move on to multiple if else within within the else. Is it okay? Uh, 
Alright, so let's look at the if else within the else. Right, so in this one, it says multiple selection, we have the, the second if else within your else. Right. We can also we can also have if else within our if. So it depends on what you want your, your program to do. Okay, so looking at the if else within the else, um, the way that we would write it similar as what we have seen before. Right. It's only that in this case, um, when the condition is false, we want it to check for another kind of condition. So you can have as many um, if else that you want within your if else. Right, for example, over here, we have um, the test score. So it checks the test score first. Um, if it's larger than 90, larger than 90, let me see. Yeah, so larger than 90, so it can be 150. Um, it will print out very high grade, keep it up. If it's less than 90, it will check. Is it between 50 and also 60? If it is between 50 and 60, it will print moderate, can improve. If the score is not larger than 90 and it's not between 50 to 60, um, it will print out not very high or moderate. All right? So you can see that in this case, we have two checking. Um, Larger than 90, yes or no, or oh, well, not yes, yes or no, true or false. If that is false, it will check. Is it between 50 to 60? Right. Um, so even if you have the um, if else within the else part, you still need to label the true and false part of it, right? Because you still have the another if and also another else inside of it. Right, so looking at the code, so we have if test score larger than 90, um, it will print those two statements. When it is false, so it goes to the else, it checks, um, it checks the second one. Right? It checks this condition. Um, is it between 50 to 60? Um, if this part is true, it will print out moderate can improve. Um, if it's not larger than 50 and not less than 60, um, it will print out not very high or moderate. Right, so the way of writing it, um, let's see if we have the other code, right, we don't have it. The way of writing it, um, you can have the if um, on the next line rather than having it on the same line, right? So it doesn't really matter, but it depends on which way that makes it easier for you to read it. Um, for me, I would personally put it on the next line, um, unless I want to save on the number of lines that, that I have. Okay, let me just copy this code over here. Let's have it here. Um, this part. Okay, let's rearrange it a bit. If the score, if else, and then else over there. Let's just have int the score equal to 40, for example. So this is fixing the value of it. All right, so this is basically what you see um, in the slides. All right? But if you want to rearrange it, um, right, because all of this is the else part for your first if. But this else over here belongs or it pair with the second if. Right, so if we change the way we would write it, so this is within the if over here, and this else, 
All right, so if you rewrite it this way, wait, let's have a tap over there. All right, so if we rewrite this way, you can see that everything of your second if else, this is within the else part. So whenever the first condition is false, it will execute um, things inside here. All right, because remember that for your if else, they need to come in pair. So this is your first if else. When it is else, it will execute either of this if part or the else part. All right, so when you write it this way, you can see which else belongs to which if. Well, if we look at our slide just now, this one, it is not clear this else is it belongs to this if or does it belong to the first if. All right, so this is the method of arranging it, arranging it so that it's easier when you read through it to know um, to know your code and which part it belongs to. All right. And of course, you can have your curly bracket at the end of your condition. So you can save more lines of code. So the same even for your else. All right. So over here, you can see that in the else, we don't have the curly bracket. All right. If we have the curly bracket, we would have the curly bracket over there and also towards the end over here because everything inside here is within your else part. All right? But even when you don't write it, that's fine as well because the way that it will read it, you have your else, um, whatever statement that comes after it belongs to the else. So this if is within the else. This statement is within the if over here. And this else, is paired with the second if over here. All right, so it knows um, all of this belongs to the else. All right, but if it confuses you, you can always write the curly bracket. End of second else. All right, so that's the use of the comment so that you can write, write it down um, so that you know which one belongs to which. And of first if, All right? So anything that makes sense to you makes it easier for you when you read through your codes. Okay, so going back here. All right, so this is another example where you have um, enter a number, it checks whether that number is a positive number, a negative number, or a zero. All right, so we have, it asks the user to enter the number, and it checks if that number is larger or equal than one, um, it will print out the number you entered is the number, and also that is a positive number. All right, so remember that in your if-else, even if you have multiple if-else, once it finds the condition as true, um, it will not do the rest of it. For example, um, over here, you enter the value 10. It checks the value 10 larger than 1. That is true. When that is true, it will not look at the rest of it. It will execute straight away whatever statements inside your if when the condition is true. All right? So if you want the other parts to be executed, then it should be outside of the if or outside of the if else. All right, if the number that you entered is not larger than one, um, it will check either that is zero or it is any negative number. All right, see that we input um, the value minus 10. It checks the first condition. Minus 10 larger equal to 1, that is false. Because that is false, it goes to the else part. Then inside your else, you have another if. So it checks over here, minus 10 less than 0, which is true. 
because that is true it will not look at the else that you have but instead it will look through whatever statements that you have within your if because the condition at this point is true okay so the same thing if say that you say that you enter um the value zero right if you enter the value zero it checks the first condition zero larger than one that is false so it goes to the else it checks the condition if zero less than zero so that is false it goes straight to your else right because it's not larger than one it's not less than zero so it must be this part so it will execute the number you entered is zero you entered zero So the way that you would arrange your if else and then you have another if else within it um, you need to make sure that you get the flow correct because otherwise if you have it the other way around or you kind of like do it differently then you might get um, the output that you not you are not expecting right so that's why you need to draw the flow chart first or having the pseudo code so that you can check your, the flow of your program Right, so you can run this code um, and if you enter similar to this sample run you should get the same output right so another example over here um, it says decide if the number is zero even or odd All right so this one um, it asks the user to enter a number and then if you want to check whether that number is zero, then you would use the, the equal operator, the equal sign. All right, so you have if number equal to zero, then you would print out zero. All right, so whenever the condition is true, it will not look at the rest of your else part. Zero, zero, zero. Yep. Um, see that. Okay, say that you enter the number maybe 2 or 4, it checks the first condition that is false. Let's say we have the number 4. 4 is not equal to 0, so it goes to your else. And then within your else, you have another condition, another if. All right, so it will do 4 modulus 2 is equal to 0. So remember that modulus um, is checking the remainder of it. If you do 4 divided by 2, there's no remainder. So the remainder is 0. 0 is equal to 0. So you know that 4 is an even number. And then we have, okay, say that if our input is the number 5, right, if number 5, when it do the 5 modulus 2, it will give us 1, right? When we do 5 divided by 2, we have the remainder of 1. So it will go to the else part and print out that 5 is an odd number. Okay, so this one over here, um, you can do it the other way around, or you can use different kind of operator. Um, okay, say that over here for the even number, um, you don't want to use number modulus 2 equal to 0. You can always have something like, if number um, modulus 2, not equal to 1 then you can still have the same one is an even number right because whenever you use the uh, modular sign um, you will get either 0 or 1 as the final value right over here you just say that if it's not equal to 1 that means that it is not an odd number it will print out it is an even number right so this part is up to you which kind of operator that you prefer to use and also what kind of like condition that you want it to have um equal to zero not equal to one those are exactly the same thing only using the different operator and different value towards the end and you can even have this one the other way around if you want to say if number modulus 2 not equal to 0 
then you would print out that is an odd number. Right? So you can kind of like see um, how you can manipulate the condition of it so that it will display different kind of statements inside of it. So the, the codes over here is just one example of how you can write to get the even, odd and also zero number. Right. And also another thing over here is about the use of the um, braces or the curly bracket. Right. As mentioned before, when you only have one statement, um, you don't actually have to write the braces or the curly bracket. You can choose not to have it. Like in this code over here. So this is exactly the same as the previous one. Only that this one, we don't use any braces or the curly bracket. Right, so you can try and run both of these codes. Um, you can add more statements if you want because we have the curly bracket over here. And over here, you can try what happens if you don't have the curly bracket, but you have several um, statements inside of it. Right? Well, basically, it will give you an error, but you can try it out to see what happens. Right, um, other examples over here for multiple selections, right? So you can use this multiple selection, say that you have some grading scheme um, and you have different ranges for different grades, right? So you would need to use the multiple selection so that it will show you the correct grade um, towards the end. Right, for example, over here, when we have grade A is between 90 to 100, then you can have your if mark larger equal to 90 and it should be less equal than 100, it will give a else if it's not between 90 and 100, it can be either 80 um, up until 0, right? So that's why you would need another condition over here. If the mark is larger than 80 and it's less equal to 89, then it will display B. If it's not within that range, it will go to the else and do another checking. Um, if that is not between that range, it will go to the else and check for another range. If it's not any of those, then it will go to the final else and display the grid as F. All right. So this is using the if else and also using the operator. To, to limit the range of the marks that you are checking. So this is one way of doing it. Um, let's see. So in this code over here, um, this whole code over here, um, right, so this is just rewriting it to show that which else belong to which if. Right, so this is exactly the same as this previous one over here. But this is just rearranging um, how you can write it to make it much easier for you to read. Because you can see straight away, let's see if else, this if is with that else, this if with that else, and this if with that else. Right? So you can see the pair of your if else. Okay, um, just a minute. Because I think I got a reply from the other groups about the, the time of the mid-term exam, mid exam. Wait just a minute. Um, right, just give me five minutes. Right, because the other group, um, they won't be able to do the test 
um, in the afternoon. Anyway, so we might change the date again. Anyway, I'll let you know about the date for the for the midterm exam soon. Okay. Right, so that's another one um anyway going back to this if else right so this is the other way of writing it so that it's easier for you to read through it okay so um for the multiple selection for the same kind of code it can be written another way as well right so on the left side um we have the if else and you can see that the flow of it um it's much better than the previous code in the previous code we write the range um inside the condition we combine two conditions right in this case um instead of having two conditions within the if we can actually choose to have only one condition because if we look at the first one it says if mark larger than 90 um it will it will show as a all right so meaning that anything um, that is less than 90, it will go and being check within your other else. Right, and then it checks, is it larger or equal to 80? Um, it's not, then that means that the marks is less than that. So it will check the next one um, up until the end. Right, so this is a more compact way of writing it rather than when you have the range of it at each of your if over here. But whichever way that you write it, um, you will still get the same result. Well, kind of, because I say kind of, because in this case over here, if you put the marks is um, 150, it will still show A. All right, so in this kind of case, we need to have another if statement over here to make sure that the mark should not be larger than 100. Okay, so this is using the if else. You can also represent the marks um, using only um, if without the else part. Right? If mark is larger equal to 90 and less equal to 100, it will show A. If this is false, um, it doesn't do anything. And when we have another if statement over here, um, just below the other if, it will execute the next line and then it checks the next line and so on. All right? So we normally use if else instead of many if because we want to check the first condition if it's um, true it will not check the rest of it if we have many if statements as over here it checks the first one say that we entered 90 All right so it checks the first one uh, we know that the grade is a but because the rest of it are not within else the rest are their own if it will still check 90 um, larger than 80 um, is it less than 89 even though that is false it doesn't do anything but then it will go to the next if it will check it again and so on right so it will be checked at every of the if that you have written in your code while when we have our if else um, it checks the first condition when that is true it will not um, go through the rest of it all right so this is trying to make your program to run more smoothly when it does not need to run the rest of this if actually all right but both ways um, are correct you can do it it will give you the result as as what you would expect okay so just give me a minute um just a reply from the other group Okay, right. Um, multiple selections. Okay, so it says over here equivalent code with series of if statements. Right, so when we have the if else and also several of the if. Okay. Um. Right. Um. 
So this is what I mentioned before. So in this in this code over here within our if else, so this is similar if else as before, but over here I add another if so that it will check first um, the mark enter is it between um, 0 to 100 or not. All right, so we have an if and the first if over here, it does not have any else. It only comes with just one if. Right, so this is the nested if statement. All right, and also another thing about this code over here. Um, so this is one way of writing it, but this if else over here, it is actually redundant because you can rewrite this code to be more compact where um, if the user enter enter larger than 100 it will show invalid straight away by having an else to pair with this if over here wait let's run the code to make more sense of it let's just copy the whole thing Okay, so this is not in the correct order. Let's rearrange it. One tap over there. Okay, so if then that's the grid, this pair with that else. This is within the if. This belongs to that if. Oh, wait, there's one over there. This else belongs to that if. Okay, if else. Then the final else. This is the if. All right, so this code over here, it can be changed by having the else, meaning that if the mark is larger than um, 100, it will display that it is invalid. Else. All right, if... And also, when we want to display the grid of it, so it doesn't matter whether it's 90, it, the, the grid is A, B, C, D, or F. We can have it, um, let's see, we can have it, so we can have it somewhere here. Would that give an error? I think that this part should be fine if. So I'll share this code on the OL. So let me try this one out first. Um, if that is within this, put that over here. Okay. Save it first. Um, desktop. Okay. All right. So don't, there's no error over here. Right, so you can see that how this can be confusing when you have many of your if else within your if else. All right, so this one, this part over here, this will be executed after it has checked um, the rest of of this if else within it. All right, so it doesn't matter whether it's A, B, C, or D, or F. Um, when it is within this condition, um, it will always print out the grid of it. Right. Let's try and run it. Enter marks. See that I enter 150. It displays invalid. So that is what we expect. Run it again. See that we enter 70. It says 70 is grid C. Which is what we expect as well. 
All right. So the way that we do this one, we have the system the order print line after it has checked whether it's A, B, C, D or F because we don't want to repeatedly write the system the order print line at each of the grid. All right. So that's why we kind of like generalize it saying that doesn't matter A, B, C, D or F towards the end as long as it's um, less than or equal to 100 it will display um, the grid of it if it's larger than 100 then it will display invalid less than 100 okay so in this part over here we actually need to we need to have another condition as well because this will still give us some kind of value if we enter um, let's see minus 100 right minus 100 is grid f which is not what we want so we can modify our code to use end less larger than or equal to zero so both condition needs to be true so that it will display a b c d or f like trying to run this one enter mark minus 100 it will show invalid if enter 100 it will put um, 100 is grid a all right so i'll share this code um, on your ol so that you can try it out as well that one this one all right because when i look at this code again i don't like how we have another if else over here so this will give you the same result as what i showed you just now only different slightly different way of writing um writing the code all right so um this one it says write a program that asks an integer number as the input from the user and then it it decides whether it is an even or odd number and then it will display the type of number so this is similar to the example code that we saw in this part all right so you can try and do for that exercise and then compare it with um, this code over here as the guideline Right, um, in this one is showing nested if, um, we have if within our if. So what it does over here is um, it checks the first condition. Um, we have int a equal to 50, int b equal to 10. It checks the first condition if a equal to 50. Um, whenever this is true, then only it will check um, if b is less equal to 10. Right. So this is writing it using um, two if statements. You can also write this one. It will still give you the same result if you write it as if a equal to 50 and b less equal to 10. All right? Unless um, you have like other statements um, for the when a equal to 50 and also maybe other statement when b less than 10 so it depends on what you want your program to do right but when you have like several if within within your within your code um, you can check whether can you do it this way using the n operator um, or using the or operator just to combine several of the conditions Right, so more example, um, this one as well. So in this one, it checks whatever number that you have, um, is it equal to zero? If it's equal to, it, it, when you modulus it equal to zero, the remainder of it is equal to zero, then you would check whether that number is an even or an, an even number. Because if the number modulus by two, if it does not give you zero, then that number is an odd number, right? So this code can be simplified and written more correctly. This is still correct, but it goes a few ways wrong. 
as I mentioned before, you can always combine um, the condition of it um, using the N operator or, or operator, depending on um, what kind of result that you expect it to be. Right? Like this one, when you want to have number modulus 2 equal to 0, and then checking whether the number is larger than 0, you can combine it as um, if num modulus 2 equal to 0 and number larger than, larger than 0. All right, so it saves you um, a few lines when you combine them. Right, um, so more examples over here. So this is, let's see what this, it does. So over here is just showing the if else. Um, and also using the modulus and also the equal sign to know whether the number is an even or an odd number. And also over here, just to repeat it again, the use of the curly bracket or the braces, right? When you have one statement, you don't need to write it. But if you want to write it, that's fine as well. All right, so in this example, so another example about the use of nested if. All right, so it can compare, well, not compare, in your condition, you can, um, you can compare different kind of variables or different kind of like values. For example, in the first if, you are comparing the balance. In the second, if you are comparing about the interest rate, All right? But even for this one, let's see, this one, okay, if balance larger than 50. So in this kind of case, you might not be able to, um, to combine the condition of it using the end operator. Because what you want to do over here is you check the balance. Is it larger than 50? If it is, um, you would check the interest rate. Is it larger than zero or not? If it's larger than zero, then you will calculate the balance, the new value of your balance. If the interest rate is not larger or equal to zero, then you would print out cannot have negative number, negative interest. All right, so you can see that it will give different outputs depending on check the balance first, then check the interest rate. So in certain cases, you can combine the conditions into one if statement. Um, in some cases, you might not be able to combine them. So it depends in your program what kind of output that you want to see. Right, so what we have looked at, so we have looked at the if-else and then multiple if-else and also the nested if.